You know, I love making videos and I love making videos about modern cars and how much I absolutely hate them. I hate their complexity, their unnecessary complexity, and now they're not even reliable. I see more modern cars from the last six, seven years broken down on the motorway or at the side of a road than cars pre-2010. And that says a lot considering that if you have a, a 2010 plate car, that is now 13 years old. So it will be pushing on a little bit. Cars have just not developed as much as that they should have. Or is it a point where manufacturers had made cars so reliable come 2008, 2009, 2010, sort of peak cars, they say, where cars just couldn't get any more reliable than what they were with the technology of, you know, ECUs, fuel injection, and all the other stuff that comes with it, to be honest. And then after then, really, it's been a downhill slide. Manufacturers were looking how to actually make a car much more reliable, much more um, sellable to the public because the public is now very demanding buying public. They expect technology. They expect hands-free this. They expect all sorts of uh, bells and whistles, as you call it. And that is just, that is completely against what I enjoy about cars. But then again, as someone who enjoys a car to drive, it's not surprising that I don't like it because cars have not been driver's cars for a long time. They have been literally given all this technology just to help the driver navigate from A to B because apparently we can't read a map these days. We need a sat nav with a great blooming touchscreen on the front, uh, which you can operate and play your Bluetooth music through your phone or whatever device uh, you are using to Bluetooth to the car. Uh, you must have all these uh, gizmos, heated steering wheels. It's just, it's just, I'm sorry. It's just, I'm sorry. It's, it's just, it's just not nice. It's just nasty. It's nasty. It's unnecessary. And unfortunately, that's the way things seem, things seem to have been going for quite some time. So I thought it was a, a good idea to just put um, a sort of medium sized video out about some random cars and down the years and why Car stylists, car designers cannot style an exterior no more. Interiors tend to be much better than what they used to be. Car interiors have come a long way. And in the last six, seven years, there have been some really amazing cars with some absolutely stonking interiors. Um, Overcomplicated and very technical interiors with lots of buttons and switches and uh, touch infotainment systems these days but nevertheless well appointed interiors but the exteriors is what catches your eye not the interior and it's what everybody sees on your car most people won't get to see the inside of your car unless they're very nosy so I think it's quite important for car stylists to get it right first time and for many years that has just not been the case and it isn't just modern cars it's older cars as well so I'm just going to pick out a few new ones on the block uh, and a few old ones and uh, do some rough comparisons but then again there are no comparisons this is quite a random video as you are going to see and I thought we would kick start with this one and it is the new MG Comet EV I am absolutely not kidding you that MG have just announced that this car is going to be coming out very very soon and this will basically get rid of all your range anxieties with evs i mean seriously there is just nothing you need to worry about it's a tiny little city car in fact it's not even that it's a micro car it looks like a, a, a japanese chinese micro car um it, it's just nasty nasty and i believe it's made in india and it reminds me of the tata uh india car which uh, became a Rover City Rover once upon a time and quite frankly that was a nasty car and this one looks why is this worthy of the MG badge this is absolute proof that the Chinese have absolutely no idea what to do with the MG badge they just don't know how to use it properly I'm not being funny they've stuck that badge onto the MG6 which it was an average car it wasn't a bad car for their first shout but you know, it could have been better, 
But then you have cars like the MG3, which is actually quite a decent car. But again, it's not a sports car. MG has always been about sports cars. And I do blame the fact that MG has been used on the 25, the 45 as the ZR and the ZS and the 75 as the ZT. I blame MG Rover for that. They should never have stuck these badges on these cars because they're not really that sporty of cars. Um, most people might argue against that, but in my opinion, the MG badge is purely a sports badge. It should not be used to be plastered onto every single car going as the sports version. It's just not right. And for me, the fact that they have not launched an MG sports car to basically replace the gap in the market that was left by the TF is just stupid. Stupid. Do they think that the market is that small? Because if they think that that's a joke, the MX-5 is still popular. Um, there are a few other cars that are, are doing really well sports car wise, but the, the Mazda MX-5 still sells in really good numbers. And the fact that they just want to waste people's time by creating these utterly dreadfully and dreary looking cars. I mean, who is going to buy a Comet? I mean, seriously, it reminds me of one of these. Yeah, you remember them? The P or P fifties? Yeah, most people don't. You wouldn't be you wouldn't be in a, a minority there. Most people don't because I've never seen one actually being driven on the road. They're that embarrassing. Um, and the same goes for this comet. If you do buy one, I don't know why. You've just made yourself really look stupid. But then again, people have always bought stupid and quirky cars. I mean, the car that looks stupid that came out from a, a very well-known manufacturer in Fiat, um, this. Yeah, everybody remembers these cars. In fact, they're still knocking around in little corners here and there in the world. Fiat multiplers. I remember that. How shocking that looked when it came out. But actually, quite a quirky car. Quite a practical and usable car uh, with three seats abreast. Do you know what? I wouldn't knock that car. It has its own owner's group, its own club movement, and I'm not surprised. And I do think that people are going to be buying them cars because they're just different. They're quirky. And yes, a car that looked probably disgusting to most people um, until probably fairly recently where they actually start, they actually look quite different, uh, which is actually a nice thing. Um, most people wouldn't touch them with a barge pole. And here we have two different sides. Are people going to see the MG Comet as a quirky car in 10 to 20 years? Debatable, but the Fiat Multipla definitely is in that category now. I mean, it's not just modern cars that you can uh, level this, this lack, lack of distinctiveness and character. And quite frankly, the designers, I don't know who they are, but half the designs today look as if they've literally just got on board with a photocopier and try to make some of the most extravagantly stupid designs that they could ever find. I mean, if you take this latest one, I mean, this is a BMW 7 Series. And goodness me, that's the new one that's coming out, I think, later this year. I mean, what have they done to the front end of it? It looks like a giant vacuum cleaner, either a giant vacuum cleaner or a pig's nose. I mean, the kidney grill has always been a distinctive feature, but what they've tried to do is to try and make it look different. They've just made it look stupid. And I think the obsessiveness here is for change because car manufacturers are constantly looking for new ways and new exciting designs to entice new customers. They've ended up alienating all the old customers as well. So really you're shooting yourself in the foot. This constant obsession for change has not suited BMW well with this new kidney grill design. And even the most positive of uh, car reviewers have all probably said the same thing about that front end. They need to stop it and go back to how they used to do things. Uh, you have older cars um, that also have the same sort of issues. I mean, take this uh first generation Daihatsu Sherrard or maybe possibly the second generation if I got that wrong um quite frankly you forgive me if I actually did get that wrong because I'm just not bothered about these cars and you know why they're just 
bland. I mean, look at this. It's like they've copied the front end of a Mark IV Fiesta facelift, especially with the grill and headlights, and the back end of it looks like a Nissan Micro K11, uh, amalgamated into this, this, what is it? It doesn't have any distinctiveness of its own. It just looks like they've got photocopier uh, of two cars, jammed it together, and that's, that's your car. I mean, the worst thing is they replaced it with the new version, um, which just looks, no, that's just boring. What sort of features are there on that car? It's an awful car to look at. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, they're probably very reliable cars, but why would you buy that unless you're just boring? I mean, look at the back end of it. I mean, they tried to do the, the, the big tail light thing, uh, which seemed to be a thing since the Mark One Focus. Every single uh, a Mark One Focus, I think uh, Volvo, uh, the I think certain Volvos of the uh, 1990s sort of brought that along. Volvo 850s, for instance, uh, that generation. And everyone started copying this high level rear light cluster theme, but also making them very tall and very long. And um, it just looks stupid on a car that isn't an SUV or an estate. And I don't know why they bothered. Apart from that, they it looks bland, absolutely bland. Maybe that's the reason why they put those lights on, to deceive the eye about how boring the rest of the car looks. I am very well aware that um, Mr Ian Seaford of Hubnut has one of these cars. and I mean, no offence to him, but it's, it's just boring. I mean, I don't know about you. And then stepping into the future a little bit, talk about boring and something that I spot every single day. I mean, these. I mean, Toyota Priuses are just the most boring things to look at. I mean, the only distinctive feature I feel is where the actual tailgate sort of meets the back end of the car, where you expect it to be a curve, but it just stops dead and it becomes a flat backside. And it just looks wrong. The proportions are all weird and wrong. Um, Toyota have always done that with their cars uh, to an extent and they've always tried to be a little bit different and to be fair the price has a good reputation uh, even though it just is boring to look at um, but there is no um, no uh, credit where it's credit due really uh, it is quite a reliable car for what it is just the exterior design again they could have got that much better and it would have flocked even more out the dealerships than what it has already done. I mean, car manufacturers down the years have been capable and more than capable of producing some extremely beautiful designs. And there are some modern cars that come into that category. But I mean, looking at some of these, I mean, the XJ Series 3 is the most beautiful saloon car ever. I don't think there's many things that will touch that car. They got the body styling perfect i mean it wasn't as if the series one and series two which was mainly styled by uh, sir william lyons himself really he was a, 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 a an owner and a car designer all in one uh, and he knew what direction to take the company um and in very very strong ideas and towards the end even so he produced some of the beautiful designs ever uh, and then the Series 3 came along where they handed over the exterior design work to Pinafrina and said, look, could you make this car look even better than what it does? And most people probably thought you couldn't. And Pinafrina was like, hold my can of Pepsi. And they certainly did that indeed. Just unbelievably sumptuous. And then you have the Dolomite Sprint, uh, which was more for everyday man, but how to make a saloon car look sporty, how to make it look attractive, now, I've got to be honest with you, there's many fours that I can name under this category as well, but if I did that, this video would be about 20 million times as long. I'm just going over some brief random cars here, and the Dolomite was one car that stood out for me, as in, it's just a car that you, you want to own. It, it really is sporty, daring, and quite frankly, it, the styling isn't the most... A, a lucrative styling put it that way the most sumptuous sort of styling but it works for that car and a lot of manufacturers don't really think about that these days they just think well this is a cheap car 
uh, for people who haven't got much money. Let's just make it look as cheap as possible because obviously people who haven't got much money don't care about what cars look like. Wrong. Wrong. Uh, another example, the P the Volvo P1800. I mean, look at this car. I mean, if you, you want to talk about sports tours in, in some respects, that it, that's what it is, essentially. Um, it, it is like a, a tour as such. It, it really is. It's like the XJS. It is just sumptuous from back to front. Um, and Volvo actually got rid of that that curvy nature all their cars had it the volvo amazon everyone and then they went to this boxy theme and they've been boxy uh up until about 20 years ago um and then they've gone back to the sort of curvy very very stylish cars and they produce some really good cars these days uh, and then we had peugeot with the 205 if you're talking about really bog standard super minis you can't get more fun than them weird but fun and everybody who says uh, that they've owned one will usually want another one and it's very very likely that to be the case uh, just cheap fun and not overindulging in the starring but not not bland at all they knew how to get it right with the go faster stripes and then the choice of wheels everything was spot on about that car it was the right car at the right time again something manufacturers just don't recognize and most people are going to lay at me, well, there's no point in being critical if you can't make some suggestions. I mean, I'm not a car designer by any means, but I know for a fact that there is a huge gap in the market for a small EV, because that's the way we're going, sadly, a small EV that looks cool to drive. It's attractive, so it has to be really styled well. It has to be just not boxy. A Comet is just too boxy. You want something a little bit more curvy, a little bit more classy, something like an original Mini. I would take inspiration from the original Mini. I would take inspiration from the VW Up, which is an absolutely stonkingly good car. And the reason that they've continued to sell well for the last 12 years since they started uh, production is because people absolutely love them. And it's just a small, cheap car that doesn't look particularly drab at all i think the back end of it looks a bit too tall but apart from that it's the right car at the right time and it is proof that when a manufacturer gets it right they don't need to change the design every five or six years the right design can go on for 15 20 years providing that there's a bit more uh, foresight with the design going forwards as such there is however one car that has really come to my attention and one car one modern car that I would love to own if only I had the money and that is great interior and great exterior and that is the Peugeot 508. Now this car quite frankly at the front and at the back it's just sumptuously styled. Whoever, whoever the stylists and designers were at Peugeot that have been at Peugeot the last probably 10 years, they have got every single one of their designs perfectly right. They are literally, they must be car enthusiasts. It's like maybe they've stolen some stylists off Alfa Romeo or something because that is a Peugeot that I would dream of owning. They look cracking. I mean, it's just a Peugeot. I mean, Peugeots are related to, you know, middle class, working class um, cars for the everyday person. With a bit of quirkiness in there, a bit of French quirkiness. These cars don't look quirky. They just look stunningly good to look at. The rear lights, the way they curve back round, they look so sporty. And that's just the standard model. That's not even a GT model any such. Every single model looks like that. Only some tweaks in there like maybe a Mac grill instead of a chrome grill, that sort of thing. But my God, that is just stunning. And then the interior is even better. I mean, this is just a cockpit. You're sitting so hunkered down with the, the top of the dashboard being quite high. And the steering wheel, a very small steering wheel. Peugeot started a trend for very small steering wheels and everybody's copied them. Um, with a flat bottom. Hey, Austin Allegro fans. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that Cortic steering wheel being copied by a few manufacturers in the last 10 years. Not quite Cortic, but flat, flat. 
not round. Um, the steering wheel is quite low down and quite frankly, everything is in that center dash. There is quite a wall between you and the passenger, but that's, that's what I like to see. I like to see a bit of a cockpit. That's really cool. Look, we have to have lots of electrics. We have to have lots of buttons. We have to have lots of convenience in that center console. And my God, Peugeot have got it slap bang on right. I mean, the, even the seats look nice. The only criticism from this photo is the B pillars are enormous. I mean, that's a criticism on every single car going these days. A, B and C pillars that are so thick, you, you need parking sensors. You can't see out. It's like looking out of a letterbox. But yeah, that is for me the best interior that you will get on a sub 50 grand car. It's as simple as that. Um, it just looks double the price of what it is as a car in completion. And um, it is certainly, I think, going to be a classic. I think there are very few cars from after 2015 where I would say they are going to be modern classics in the future to represent the last generation of cars. And I think there will be a queue of 508s and 308s. 308s as well just look just as good. Uh, the 208s, they're okay. They're okay. They're not too bad. Um, but I would go for the bigger car because I think the 508 in, in, in itself is just something else. Um, so keep you on that sort of car because I would love to own one, maybe one day. But uh, I'm going to end, the, end this video on a little bit of positivity. Um, quite frankly, this has been a random video of me having a rant at some very random cars, but not so random because my dislike of modern cars in many respects relates to the exterior styling is just rubbish. It's just the thoughts, the ideas are rushed. They're not even, but it's like they're not even bothering. Car manufacturers at the low end of the market, trying to make a, a, a profit is difficult, but you're not gonna make a profit if people are not attracted to buy them. And I do believe that although the general public, the general car buying public are much more fickle than they used to be, I still think they're going to go for a car that looks semi-decent. And quite frankly, an MG Comet, I would laugh if that is a success. I mean, the, they've got the right idea, a smaller car, but it just looks rubbish. Go back to the drawing board, MG, and maybe not actually badge it as an MG. Um, I wouldn't necessarily think they should badge it as a Rover because people don't understand what a Rover is now. I think the name Rover died a death many years ago and it should be left in the past. But um, not an MG. It has to be something else. Anyway, you take care, guys. Uh, thank you for liking and subscribing and supporting the channel. And it just encourages me to do these uh, just random videos uh, that not many people are probably going to watch. But those of you who do watch are going to enjoy it. So thank you very much. And I will see you very soon.